Let's look at non-duality in daily life. Because you may find that you are very well engaged and present during certain periods in your life. That could be when you are sat on your meditation pillow or you are taking some time out to do some self-inquiry or self-reflection or whatever sort of spiritual practice you, you have going. But as soon as you leave that, as soon as you get up from your meditation pillow or your spiritual practice and you get on with the daily life, you get on with your work and you are now entangled and fully involved with work, stress, problems, family, friends, whatever it may be. You may look to yourself and realize that you are no longer present. And so you are now yearning for a time to go back and sit on this meditation pillow again, to just be present once more. And there is something illusory about this that I'm hoping through this video you'll be able to recognize this. And that is that presence isn't something that can be switched on or off. For if there was no presence, the stresses and the entanglements in the work, family and life, everyday life stuff, that wouldn't take place. Presence is the pre prerequisite for all of the happenings and experiences in life to take place. So even when it feels like you are daydreaming and somewhere else and you have lost touch from your true self, that's actually not the case. You cannot lose touch. What can happen, however, is that certain experiences are valued more or less than other experiences. And so the heightened pronunciation of the experiences that are more valued overshadow all the other experiences and it creates this illusion that you have now lost touch of being present or being here right now and this kind of reminds me of this story or this um, saint or monk or I can't really remember who it was but in essence someone came up to this person and asked how do I know if I'm enlightened and the response was that you go and you sit with your family and you'll see if you're enlightened or not. Go back and see your family because the person was on retreat after retreat and away from all of this life in seclusion or whatever. Of course, it's going to be easier to be present. And so really there is this sort of integration that takes place. And yes, when we speak of integration and we speak about all these doing activities and practices, these are in some form somewhat of a concession. We say that this is the case and these things need to be done. Um, but once it's recognized that presence isn't something that switches on or off, then it doesn't matter what it what is taking place, whether you are on the meditation pillow or you are speaking to someone or you are in the middle of solving a mathematical problem, there is presence always. And the recognition here is that you are this presence. It cannot be anything or anyone else. But if you are if you see yourself as this entity that falls into presence and falls out of presence, then then the reality will unfold itself in a way that it may seem so. It may seem that you fall into presence and out of presence. You may be distracted and so on. <clears throat> and really, one thing or perhaps one practice 
um, or a question that's actually really um, potent in this case to really try and dismantle this um, illusory concept that presence can be switched on or off would be to ask is anything missing right now in this moment what is missing in this moment what is lacking and every time there is the notion that something's missing then once that's an indication that certain aspects of life are valued more than other aspects of life and it creates this contrast once more and so these aspects that are valued are more pronounced which overshadows all of that stuff that i just explained to you so if you ask this question and realize that nothing is missing that it's all the way it is it just is what it is you know this is a lot of um, people use this in slang. It is what it is. But in essence, if you're able to ask this question and see that nothing's missing, that whatever is missing is a manufactured idea, a manufactured expectation that has been picked up somewhere along the way, or your imagination makes you feel that there's somewhere else, this sort of dream place to be, or that once you sit in a, on your meditation pillow, you feel in a certain way. And that feeling when it goes, when you are engaged with family work, whenever it is, when you are creating these contrasts and you're believing that you should be feeling how you feel when you're sat on your meditation pillow, wherever you go, then there will be that contrast. And so, Reality is a dynamic happening. There are infinite number of things taking place always. And so the moment you try to isolate certain expectations and, and, and your perspective has to now match these expectations, it will never work. Because the nature of reality is whole and complete and you're now trying to isolate a certain aspect of it. And so it's no wonder you will always feel incomplete and inadequate or feel like you're missing something. So, in a way, non-duality or, <clears throat> or these practices are there so that even the practice itself can be dropped. So that it's recognized that you are always meditating and always have been anyway. It's effortless. As a concession, we say that, yes, you have to exert some effort. You have to get up, sit or close your eyes or whatever the practice is. But eventually, even these are recognized that actually all along, this has been it. It's always been this. And every time some, some of you, or even myself, I, I had this and I struggled with this a lot. You may get a glimpse of this isness, of this state of just being. And it feels like it's a state, like something has been washed over you or whatever. Every time you are resting in this isness and you get a glimpse of that, there is now an attachment to it. You may develop some sort of attachment or an expectation to it. And that too becomes problematic because everything else seems inadequate. This very moment will feel inadequate or you manufacture the notion that this moment is inadequate if you are not in this is in a state, just being. And so when you get a glimpse of this, Sometimes what can also happen is that there's this external notion or another manufactured idea or something will try and grab your attention a way to get you out of this isness or this sense of being. And that sense of being is always the case anyway. It doesn't switch on or off. You could be 
you could be angry. You could be angry and in the middle of some road rage and you're about to swear and, you know, cuss this next person's whole family tree or whatever it is. But you could be very much present. Or, or you actually are present. But you could recognize that you are present. So really, all this is, is it's, it's pointing out the obvious. And the obvious is that you are present. This is it. This is all it is. And all of this talk is pointing towards that. Right? But something within you is constantly telling you that this is inadequate and it's not good enough. And so you try to look elsewhere. And all of this elsewhere has to be manufactured. Has to be imaginative. Has to be illusory and untrue. And so this is where you get stuck in cycles because untruth or illusions in some sense they blur reality, they are blinding and so you are walking with your eyes closed it's no wonder why you bump into different ob obstacles and suffer from that. So some 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 of you guys are waiting for this switch to just happen and life just completely is showered with water, water you know waterfalls and of bliss and fireworks and colors and all of this stuff whether that happens or not it's not um it's not something to chase the moment there's any form of chasing something else is better than this then this is implied as inadequ inadequate. It's not good enough. This moment right now is not good enough. And that's blasphemy to imply this or believe this because, because all there is is this moment. There's nothing else. There is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. All there is is now. And this, the idea of yesterday and the imagination of tomorrow these happen now, anyway. So you're okay to just be here. It's okay. And then to just really wrap this all up, it's it's about just being okay through and through with whatever takes place. It's okay. Now, saying that it's okay doesn't mean that you are agreeing with it or you are disagreeing with it. This is beyond agreement or disagreement. It's beyond what's right or wrong. It's just okay. This, this right now is all there is. So by default, I am okay. You were born by default with, with, with this okayness. It's okay. As a baby, you don't come out of your mother's womb demanding things and wanting to change things straight away. No that develops over time. So we're trying to get back to this or decondition ourselves to this place of okayness. And I promise you it's okay. So I really hope that you are perhaps asking the right questions or inquiring into why am I feeling or why am I chasing after a certain feeling or what are my expectations? Inquire into your expectations because they are the ones that are stopping you from allowing everything to just be as it is. And the world will turn, the sun will, will rise and set, regardless of the opinions and expectations anyway. These infinite number of happenings in the cosmos that are taking place right now will happen regardless of opinions. So there's really not much control and the sense of control is illusory. But as a concession, 
you go ahead with deciding what to do. You go ahead with chasing after your goals, but it's vital to understand what is taking place. It's okay that there is the desire to chase and it's okay to not chase. It's okay through and through. And whether you are chasing intensely after a goal and this is all you've ever wanted all your life and you find yourself in this rat race, these are all okay. But fundamentally, you just are. Everything just is. Rest in that isness, in that being, or recognize that that isness and that sense of being is the case. So this is very much of a reminder rather than you, me teaching you something new. So I will wrap this up here. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hassan from The Spiritual Walks, and we are all on a journey towards the truth.